Hey parents, welcome back to the video. Now, this week we have something very amazing. It's so, so, someone that's super awesome that I have the privilege uh, to have on the show this particular week. Um, she's actually a role model for me as well. She's also a coach to me. And um, it's someone that I've got the chance to learn from and also develop myself thanks to this person's wisdom. This person right here beside me uh, is not only someone that is young at heart, young in soul, but has been someone that is very wise and very capable in transforming not only her own life, but also the people around her. Helping parents, teachers, educators, and even children from all walks of life, from as young as like five years old, to as old as mountains, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the amazing thing is, uh, this person not only is super amazingly intelligent, uh, not only she's a uh, JPA Award scholarship, uh, Scholar, she's also a PhD holder. Not only is she intelligent on the mind, but also in the soul. She's also a beauty queen pageant, uh, a very talented dancer, uh, an amazing, passionate, loving mother, uh, a very powerful, direct and focused coach, speaker, entrepreneur and author. Now, if I were to do her introduction, I will not be able to finish. If you want to get to know more about her, let's get to know the person behind all these credentials. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the one and only Dr. Elaine. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being with us today. Now, um, this week is very, very exciting because I got the opportunity to get you to sit down together with our parents to focus on something that's very powerful because in all the years of experience of what you've been doing, you've been helping children and parents together to transform their lives to be able to live a happy, fulfilled and successful life together. It's not about the parents sacrificing themselves just for the children or it's not just the child sacrificing themselves for their parents. It's the ability to put two to two together. And at the end of the day, it's less sacrifice, less point to sacrifice and more points to enjoy in life. And you wrote an amazing book. An amazing book that I would say it's like a holy bible for every parent out there. Um, if you are a parent, young or old, seasoned or not seasoned, you need to get a copy of Dr. Elaine's book. It's called Prison Chart. And Prison Child is an amazing book and you know what, rather than me ramble on because I'm a fanboy, uh, I would rather have the person that wrote the book share a little bit about it. Now, Doctor, could you please share why you write the book Prison Child? Why was it so important for you to put so much energy and effort? Because I know you took a lot, a lot of energy put getting this book completed. Why is it so important and why do they need to get a copy? Right, first of all, thank you Webby, okay, for having such a long credential about me. <laughs> Indeed, fanboy, but I am also a fan of him. Now, uh, before I actually go into this book, let me just share with you all how did we actually get together. It's mm. because we share the same vision. Mm. We share the same passion that we really want to advance humankind mm. for betterment. So that clicks us together and that really allows us to make greater changes regardless of um, teachers, you know, parents and our students. So talking about this book, mm -hmm. I think the greatest motivation that got me to publish this book, it's really to help parents not to make the same mistake in a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. You may think that what kind of mistake that a parent could have made? Mm -hmm. Well, if we follow generation after generation, the things that we pick, which is positive, definitely a positive impact. Mm. But what about those which we do not know we are not doing it right? Mm. And that's the critical thing. Mm. So because we are so used to it, you know, subconsciously, that's what our parents did to us. Let us just follow through. Mm. But there is something that we do not know what we do not know. Mm. And that's very dangerous. Mm. And that's why I, I label it, I put the title as prison child. Mm. Yeah. And prison child is a very, very good metaphor because the prison child can be the children that is the ones that we are taking care of, or it can also be us ourselves, yes. the parents. And it's not that you do not want to be free. It's not that you don't want to be going out there and create all these amazing things. It's sometimes because you're stuck. Yeah. And that's what I realized about the book. The book is also a great way to help an individual, not just to be a great parent, but to be a great person yourself. And one thing that I noticed that you mentioned just now was um, a lot of parents, they are taking the cue of being a parent 
from their parents. Mm -hmm. So what happened is when they see what their parents do, they model, they copy, right. and then they follow through with it. Sometimes parents also notice certain things that their parents did that they are not too happy with. And a lot of times consciously parents will say, I will not do that to my child. Mm -hmm. And then as they are parenting their child, somehow, somewhere, they actually do it. Sometimes at a way that harms their child even more than themselves last time. Well, I think that even more comes from a point where by if, for example, I dislike my parents' style of parenting mm. and I will actually do the extreme side, mm. which is the total opposite. Mm. But we know that things need to go in moderation. Mm. We cannot go, you know, the, the two spectrums of Correct. end, but we need to have the moderation mm -hmm. and that's where we need to know how to balance things up. Correct. Yeah, because sometimes if we really dislike that person, Whatever that person do, does, acts, we just don't want to follow. Mm. We just detest about it. <laughs> okay. So, so I think uh, we really need to know what is the fundamental principle that we do not conform to the norm. Mm. Yeah, because what passed down generation after generation have become, has become the norm. Mm. And we need to know, is that norm really suitable in the 21st century? Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, there are many parents who always come to me. You know, last time, my parents didn't have such issue to educate mm. I, but I, I, it seems that I have large difficulty to educate my children, mm. to nurture my children. Why is that so? Mm. So I, the very first question was, did you use your phone when you were young? Mm. No. But now, yes, even at the age of three years old, mm -hmm. they're swiping their phone already. Yeah, parents tend to give the screen to the child to keep them quiet right. and occupied while the parents do other stuff. Yes. Uh, it's not that parents want to, like, brainwash their children. Sometimes they just use that because it's a convenience. convenience. But this is something that's quite interesting because um, so many times we notice this pattern in the education industry where once upon a time parents take the responsibility to come up and say, teacher, I will take care of my child's values mm -hmm. and growth. Teacher, I need you to teach and help them get educated. Mm -hmm. And as time progresses, after talking to so many educators today, mm -hmm. they realize a shift. Mm -hmm. The shift where a lot of parents are coming to teachers and say, hey, this is my child, fix them. To the point that they expect teachers to be the magical uh, wizard and to transform the child from not just the intellectual, but also the interpersonal part. Mm -hmm. And do you think that is true? Well, I think as a parent, I must talk on behalf of them. Yes. <laughs> in, 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 in the sense of, you know, not that they want to put the responsibility to the educators. Um, somehow or rather, from the economical aspect, where two people need to work and they bring the money into the household. Mm -hmm. And what they can do is to generate that kind of um, working nature and add, add on a job description mm -hmm. to our 21st century mm -hmm. educators. Mm -hmm. So since they need to bring the income into the household, it would be great that teachers can actually take such a responsibility. Mm. Nonetheless, I am an educator too. Mm. So now I have to speak from the educator's perspective. <laughs> is that, yes, we can actually be the one who hold hand in hand with the parents. Mm. But if just one hand without the parents' cooperation or in sync with the alignment, it doesn't work. Mm. It has to be from both sides. So it is important. The wise words of saying that you need two hands to clap. Right. And it's very interesting because I was playing the devil's advocate just now with that particular point of view and I'm very happy that you share from two perspectives. Mm -hmm. And I think that reflects from what the author of the book. <laughs> because in the book, it shares step by step on how an individual can be able to stay calm mm -hmm. and to look at certain issues or certain things that's happening at different angles. Mm -hmm. Because in the book, it talks about the angles of how parents are feeling. Because certain things that parents do is out of positive intention. Yes. And it's sometimes the same thing with the kids as well. The things that they lash out, the behaviours that comes out, mm -hmm. is also based on a positive intention, but it might not be the right action. Yeah. So what happens is the book shares very clearly about steps by steps on how to be calm, to mm -hmm. assess the situation, and then be able to use questioning skills, mm -hmm. to use uh, certain modalities, to be able to communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the book goes in stage by stage. Before you go to working with the child, you work with yourself first. Mm -hmm. And you're allowing the child to break out of this prison of thinking of themselves as being not good enough. Mm -hmm. Because we notice that um, as much as parents want to help their children, um, I've heard so many cases where moms and dads come to us 
and they feel disappointed with themselves because as much as they work super hard like you mentioned their, their number one goal is to give their children the very best and as they are working hard their idea is I give them the best money can buy mm -hmm. but sometimes they also realize that's missing something they are exchanging something for something else and um, what would you advise parents with that because parents realize there's a void there's an emptiness there mm -hmm. that they need to fill up but maybe they don't realize what it is what would you answer to that okay let's just imagine every child comes to this world mm -hmm. as if it's a it's an empty piece of land mm -hmm. and as parents we are the architect to build the building mm -hmm. whether it's a short building or a tower or any kind of design it's really up to the parents and based on their blueprints mm -hmm. and to build it mm -hmm. so somehow or rather we always see what is above the land mm -hmm. but in order to build a structure a strong building you need the Fundamentals, fundamental the foundation, the foundation mm -hmm. okay so we, we i think nowadays parents put a lot of focus on what we can see mm -hmm. for example academic result mm -hmm. is it something tangible mm -hmm. oh yes. yes of course um they are able to speak um, in front of public is it visible oh Very yes much. uh whether can they play good piece of piano mm -hmm. music piece is it visible yes so whatever they see very clearly in front of them, we can think that they have done a good job as a parent, mm. it's vividly in front of them as time goes by Correct. with their structure in front of them. Correct. But why is this century of you know um, reach of knowledge and skills everywhere, but the internal the internal um, feeling of a child is so fragile. Mm. The emotion is so fragile. Why is that so? It's because we have neglect the fundamental, the pillar down there, mm. under the soil that we couldn't see. Mm. Mm. So no matter how much you send children to classes, tuition, enrichment program, getting strings of aids, mm. but without carrying the fundamental emotional aspect, this building will not be strong mm. and it will actually topple easily. Mm. And that's where parents come to us that they feel disappointed after years of nurturing a child. Correct. Why is this child such a rebel? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why is this child, you know, getting good academic results, but they do not know how to handle their life? Mm -hmm. It's because they neglect the fundamental side, Correct. which is that emotion, the inner side, and the, so that's why this prison child is not the physical prison; it's the emotional prison. Yeah, which I think parents really need to look into this aspect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I actually support that idea very much. Mm -hmm. Because to build a strong building, you need the strong, very, very strong foundations. Uh, it's even more the foundation than the building itself. Right. Because the buildings can be broken down and then rebuilt again. Um, the question is, a lot of people don't realize this. Mm -hmm. And it's actually up to us, the educators, to spread the news. And it's actually very, I'm very happy because as much as we got to learn about this in psychology classes. Yeah. Uh, it took us about six months to teach us about developmental psychology, where at different stages of the child's growth and development, they learn differently and they develop themselves differently. Mm -hmm. The problem is parents are not informed about important facts like this. And with lack of that information, it gives them less opportunity mm -hmm. to take the right action steps. Mm -hmm. And again, it goes back to the same thing that we mentioned earlier on, they model what has been happening in their past life with their pet families. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's actually a great thing that we have technology today. Right. As much as people want to blame technology for a lot of the things that are not good, but technology is also a, a reason for a lot of great things yeah, that happen. That double-edged sword. Correct. And it's, it's a very good metaphor because technology is a representation of life. Mm -hmm. Everything that we have in life is like a tool that helps bring from where we are to where we want to go. The only problem is, are we well equipped? Are, do we have the fundamentals internally, mentally? and also ethically the standards that we have to balance it up, to utilize the tools and resources to go forward. Uh, I think Tony Robbins says this very much, it's not about the resources that helps you, it's about the ability to be resourceful, right. to get things done. And, and it's like our viewers right now, parents that are watching this video, it's not that they have nothing else to do in their life, it's not like they have all the time on the world to, to just watch a video of two people talking. <laughs> but the reason why you're watching is because maybe deep down you realize something can be better or something needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. And you're watching, you're looking for resources to help you make your family a better family. Right. And, and I, uh, I'm very appreciative of you watching this video because um, so many times we see amazing change in the families that we work with when not just the kids open up, it's the parents. Mm -hmm. 
because so many times we work with so many kids it has never been an issue yes kids are the easiest people to work with because one of the things is like they are in a stage where they're very malleable mm. as long as they get the fundamentals they're feeling loved mm. they're feeling protected they're feeling connected they will be willing to go the distance and I think that's one of the special things that your book also shares. How to actually develop the connection to have love, mm -hmm. the connection to have that communication to be understood, the connection for you to feel safe in that relationship. And, and I, as much as I've learned all this, you've been able to put it in a simple language for me to like, oh yeah, that's a good point. And, and it helped me explain to many parents that I work with as well. Mm -hmm. and, and the amazing thing is sometimes it's one or two ideas that opens the, the door to amazing things in the family. Um, now, I, I, think, I think a lot of parents out there, they, they are sold, the idea is there. It's like, yes, I know this is important, I appreciate that. Could you share maybe one or two things that you notice has been an issue in parenting today, mm -hmm. that, that parents can notice, and maybe one or two tips of how they can actually utilize simple steps that they can actually start making a change for their family. Mm. Mm. Um, let me share one which is typically heard from parents, which mm. is the addition to gadgets. Oh my gosh, yes, that's so true. <laughs> okay. uh, that, not just to the kids, <laughs> the yeah, the parents as well. <laughs> so, I, I think from the parents' perspective, we are so used to technology, even mm. at, you know, at meal time, you know, that, that's what I always do. Mm. It's just so in me, where I'm like, okay, whenever I have my mouth, then my eyes are just like, mm, okay, mm, okay, all right. You can see tables of families, they are having their phones, adults and, and, yep. and children. Yep. So uh, the one very simple thing is that if you, we were to eliminate, it's impossible mm. to be very frank. Mm. It's impossible to eliminate mm. technology using phones and gadgets because yep. what we mentioned is a double-edged sword. Why not we actually utilize the positive side, okay? Mm. So but one thing is that in order to build a good family culture, you can use your phone for whatever reasons work or say uh, for students they need to actually study research or whatsoever during meal time that is the best time even if it's one hour a day it's good enough for them to put their phone away mm. and just have pure communication during meal time mm. you, you know you know what's the uh, subliminal message that we, we send to our children say for example you ask the children not to play the phone okay the children follow suit they obey then the parents actually still handling you know, certain things and then the children will be asking daddy you are also using the phone and you say yeah work work it's important i have to reply i mean that's unavoidable sometimes but the message the subliminal message that you send the children okay whatever it is Daddy's job is more important than me. So when this child grows into teenage phase, this teenager will also be thinking, my friend, my work, my interest is more important than daddy. Mm -hmm. Because this is what the message that he has received. So that's why we don't say that sentence. If the child really asks, when the first very first step you need to do is just Mm. And let's talk. Mm. Let's communicate. That's one very simple gesture that everyone can do. It's amazing how some small actions can give such a big impact in the individual. It's very similar to uh, the kids. Mm -hmm. They are hungry for something, they are hungry for the parents' attention. Rather than politely asking, Mommy, can you spend some time with me? A lot of them, they act out. They do things that might irritate the parents. Right. They do things that might upset the parents. Not because they want to really hurt their parents, but because they are longing for the attention from parents. And, and that's human nature. A lot of people, they do things with one intention, but their behavior goes in another way. Because I think the extreme behavior will catch more better attention than the good one. And that's what, uh, why they are mischievous kids at school. Mm. Because being a good student, yes, it's kind of like te um, teachers take for granted. As a student, you need to be good. Mm. But if I am a mischievous one, I get the whole mm. attention that I need. Yes. Whether I get caned, I get scolded, I don't care. As long as I get the attention, that's right. more important for an individual. All right, all right. So yeah, they rather to go that way. I can totally relate because <laughs> when I was growing up, I was a very naughty kid. I was very mischievous and it's not because I want to be bad. It's not because I want to be bad in my teacher's eyes, my parents' eyes, mm. but because they gave me attention. Mm. 
and uh, I didn't realize it that time. I only realized it as an adult. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge here. It's like a lot of your kids, they don't know that they're doing that. They don't realize that behavior. And a lot of times, something that I, I want to bring up uh, that I think is very important, many of times parents uh, assume mm. that what their child is doing, the behavior is what relates to them. Mm. It's like the child is doing something naughty, they are naughty. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to say that that's not true. Would you agree? I agree. It is not true. Because what is the behavior doesn't represent the person. Like a parent. Just because you work long hours, it doesn't mean you don't love your family. Mm. It's not the action, it's your intention that is more important. Mm. And a lot of times, we got that mixed up. Mm. So one of the things that I hear you mention is, if your intention is to have a development in your family, and you want the very best for them, you need to start first. And sometimes it's not about changing your whole life. Mm -hmm. It's about changing the small little things. It's about being realistic. It, I, I have this metaphor where I say, it's like you don't eat the whole apple by putting the whole apple in your mouth. You will actually die choking yourself. So what happens is you eat the apple by biting one bite at a time, manageable sizes. Mm -hmm. So how about during dinner time, you put your gadgets away, be the room model, put the gadgets away and give yourself the opportunity to be present. To be present not just to your children to your spouse to yourself to the food in front of you mm -hmm. and being present is a very good starting point um, it can be half an hour or an hour and I notice a lot of um, families mm -hmm. once they get the ball rolling they tend to not need the phone anymore right. the reason why a lot of people are looking for mobile devices to be stimulating is because that's where they get stimulation yes. that's where they get the ability to feel good and if Parents, if you don't realize, there is this particular division in psychology mm -hmm. that focuses on making games. One of the best paying jobs in a psychologist is to make games for game developers. Why? Because it's the psychology of making the game so addictive, mm -hmm. so good in making the person playing the game feel good, mm -hmm. that they would rather for both family, work, and anything better in their life to continue playing the games. But that's the thing. It's because sometimes your kids are not getting what they want from you, hence they are addicted to games. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as parents, because we're not getting what we want from our kids, mm -hmm. we as the adult, the mature person, fall into that trap as well. So the very first thing we can do is number one, to be aware of the situation. It is not that you don't want to have a good family, it's not that your kids don't want to be mm -hmm. good kids to you. It's there's this situation where you're not connected. Mm -hmm. You're not able to feel the love from each other. I, I think it's very important that we don't look at addiction to gadget as a problem. Mm. It is just an effect. Mm -hmm. It is just a, temp a thermometer mm. to let you know that, hey, the temperature is rising. Yes. And if the addiction is too deep, mm. which means it's really at a critical mode. Alright. It's an indicator to yes. say, hey, wake up. Yes. Is this the direction you want to go into? Correct. Correct. So in other words, it, it's very important. Once you, if you realize that you're on the phone too much or your kids are on the phone too much, mm -hmm. the very first thing is learn to stop. Put it down mm -hmm. and give yourself the opportunity once a day to have this communication and, and that will help the ball roll right. great that's a great way to start but what if because mm -hmm. I, I also hear a lot of cases where parents are having difficulties communicating or relating with their kids already mm -hmm. now once upon a time this used to be a problem where the child becomes a young teenager mm -hmm. and it's not because the teenager wants to hate the parents it's because in the teenager's mind they assume they learn everything from mommy and daddy right. they assume they know everything that mommy and daddy has to offer for them and it's a stage where the child, the teenager, wants to become their own person. Mm. And they are going to go against the parents because they want to be someone else. Mm. Because they've been looking at mommy and daddy all this while, now they want something else. Mm. So they will purposely go against mommy and daddy. Mm. But in today's world, things have changed. Now with so many reports, so many stories about children as young as 9 years old, 8 years old even, they are already becoming very uh, against they actually are very wanting to be their own individual and have a lot of fights mm -hmm. with the mummies and daddies. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is a good advice to help them improve their relationship? I think we need to look from two angles. Mm. Number one is that because of the social media, the globalization, the technology that enable children to get connected so easily, even at the age of seven, I can watch a video about how 18 year old behave or mm. how 30 year old you know uh, act in life mm. so that's why the maturity of growing up is so fast mm. but the thing it doesn't correlate with the mental maturity mm. so okay. it's a mismatch exactly and we can't as i mentioned we can't avoid we mm. can't actually disconnect the uh, 21st century children to 
watch YouTube. Correct. Correct. Uh, in fact, many children watch YouTube and learn so much. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. So okay, since this is unavoidable, let's look at the second aspect. Mm. What is the reason that a child would rather learning from others but not their parents? Good question. Okay. Most of the time, if the parents are the role model of the children, mm. just like why children, teenagers, they like to go for like K-pop or whatever, mm. they have their Anything idols, that's trending. right? Because they treat them as their role model. Mm. They always change their fashion, they change their song, they change their dance movement. Mm. It's so up to the beat, you mm. see. So that's why they, they treat them as their role model. Whatever they do, act and play, they follow. And why not their parents? Mm. So if we compare, it's because their idol change from time to time. Their parents are the same from the day they're born. Mm. <laughs> so, I'm hearing you, but some people might get confused. Uh, some parents might say, what? Are you asking me to become like the pop star, change my clothing <laughs> and all that? I'm the mommy, I'm the daddy. How do you expect me to go do dancing and all that? Well, if you can do that, Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's why you can see some you know parents that are still very hip, very yeah, hip. yeah because right. they want to get connected with mm. their children. Mm. They they talk the same language. Correct. But if you are not into that, you know that you don't want to change, you don't want to go that you know ah, you know I'm a professional, I'm a lawyer, I can't dye my hair like that. <laughs> so what can you do? Mm. I think the fundamental here is that you need to allow your child to see you that you are growing, mm. you are improving. You are actually become better from yesterday. Mm. You know, that, that's what I always do before I actually um, step out of my house and going to work. I always tell my son that mommy is going out to, to learn today. I'm going for classes. Mm. And then when I'm back, I will, I will hug my, my dear boy and say, hey, mommy has learned something new today. Or say, for example, mommy is out today is to help other people. So, you know, you, you allow your child to know that you are growing every day. You are living for a purpose. You are helping others. You are contributing to the society. Mm -hmm. They see you as a figure, as a role model. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the children, they give their speeches in, in, in the uh, public speaking platforms that I have. They share their role model, not necessarily K-pop star. Mm -hmm. They share like uh, Mark Zuckerberg, they share like Steve Jobs, they share like Elon Musk. They share their characteristics. Why these people are their role model? Mm -hmm. Because of their perseverance. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Have students who share their role model, parents, my parents are my role model. And guess what? Those children who share their parents as their role model, they have great relationship with their parents. Mm -hmm. And that makes a difference. I will attest to that as well because th that's a reality that I've gotten the chance to observe. Um, most of the parents that you've just mentioned, they either have the opportunity to listen to you or get mentored by you as well. <laughs> you see, there is no stopping of learning and growing. And if I'm hearing you correctly, um, I noticed that you mentioned that it's about growth mm -hmm. and it's also about communication. Mm -hmm. It's like as the ch parent is doing something that they want to see their child to do. So in other words, it's like being the right type of role model. Uh, many of times, parents to the child's eyes mm -hmm. is doing the exact same thing. Right. They call this the broken record. The broken record is like parents, if you remember back in the day, right? We don't have CDs and stuff. We have those tape players. It like, plays the same thing and the same thing and the same thing. And if, if you realize, if you catch yourself, what do you do to your kids? You tell them exactly the same thing again and again and again. And in your child, that's what they see you as, yes. a broken record. To the point that they don't realize that you're growing. Mm. They don't realize that you're changing, improving, and get moving forward. And it's also a problem in Asia because in Asia, um, the cultural point of not sharing mm. about growth and improvement mm. is normal. Whereas in Europe or in the US, it's so common mm. to be like, you know what? I am now the 30s is the new 20s, <laughs> 40s is the new 20s. And they, they talk about how they improve. Something that I noticed about how parents carry themselves affects their children. Mm. Uh, I remember this amazing story where um, the, there is a, 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 a mom and dad walking their child in the park. Mm -hmm. And then some strangers stop this parent and say, Oh, stop, sorry, uh, I noticed your child. This child looks so, so intelligent, looks so handsome. And then the parent, being Asian, not all Asian, but being Asian, they are a bit shy about compliment. 
and to become humble, they say the total opposite. My child, handsome? No <laughs> la, not handsome la. This one, stupid one la, idiot la, not smart la. Yeah, yeah. Out of the intention of not being not humble. Mm, mm, mm. But what they don't realize is the message that they send right. to their kids is like even mommy and daddy think mm. that I'm not good enough. Yes, yes. Well, else in the US, <laughs> it's a totally different thing. I've seen this firsthand. Uh, a parent walking the daughter in the park. Mm. Suddenly a stranger walk by and says, wow, your daughter is beautiful. The mother looks at the stranger with a big smile and says, Thank you, of course. Look at the mother, <laughs> the factory. <laughs> and, and, and they're so proud. And the child accepts that. And the child thinks always, wow, mommy is so proud of me. Mm -hmm. The action gives that kind of result. That, that's why uh, we always see, um, I mean, for decades already, we see the Westerners are able to speak so well. Yes. You know, they are so fluent in their speaking. Yes. Well, whereby Asian, many things they just hold back. Should I say, should I not? What, what about people laugh at me? You know, they have so much all this self hesitation, self, self, self doubt, exactly. Mm. So all this little action, as you mentioned, small action, big impact. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But one thing is that the Asian may say, okay, we shouldn't, we shouldn't toot our own child, yep. you know. And uh, you look look at the Westerners, they are just they don't have the basic values. Mm. You know, they don't even respect their parents. Okay, so there is this uh, argument. <laughs> Let's come to the moderate. Mm. How do we actually communicate in the uh, better way? Now, I, I would suggest this. You know, whenever we appraise child, mm -hmm. Asian, Asian, not really. <laughs> they don't really do this. Boy, <laughs> you got 98%. Oh, what happened to 2%? <laughs> exactly. Uh. Exactly. I'll say, for example, 50, you could have actually got 60. Or 960. <laughs> you can actually aim for 70. There's like a never ending. That's why Asian always think that I'm not enough. Mm. I am not good enough, mm. you see. But uh, on the other hand, on the contrary, it's like, Western. Good job! Well done! Even slightly little things. Like, good job! Good job! Good job! Rewarding so, mediocrity. Mm, yeah. mm. So, so we really need to come to the um, uh, middle point. Middle point. The fine balance. Correct. Mm. And how can we do that? Is through our communication technique. Very good. I'm so happy you're talking about this right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a very powerful thing. Because you know, whenever we want to acknowledge, I use the word acknowledge. Mm. Okay. Why? Because we. The, what's the What's the whole purpose of us? praising a person because we want that person to know that hey you have done something great mm. keep it up all right so that's the whole intention mm. but how do we uh, exemplify it it's through the communication technique say so if you want to praise someone you want to acknowledge someone you need to give that keyword mm. say for example you pick up the rubbish mm. Adrian said yeah you should actually pick up to clean the house we, we, we do not want this uh, thing on the floor mm. okay and the end, that's not acknowledgement at all. Mm. No, rather, why not we change the way that, wow, you are such a caring person. Why? Because of this action, mommy can be carefree with the house cleanliness. Mm. Thank you. So with such, you see, you have that very specific word. What is that word? Caring. caring. Mm. Okay. You have a very specific evidence, which is picking up the rubbish. Mm. And what is the impact? It helps to alleviate mommy's burden mm. to take care of the house. Mm -hmm. So the child is very clear that I should repeat this good action. Mm. With that connection of caring and action with the behavior. Mm. So like for example, a child's having good result. You know that, wow, you get A, good job, awesome, excellent, let's go for a meal, full stop. Rather, if we change it to, wow, mommy really like your effort. Mm. Because of your effort, because of your discipline, mm. you are able to get this result. Let's go for a meal. Wow. Yeah. So if I were to break down that formula, because that formula is a very important and powerful tool that you use in coaching mm -hmm. and in parenting as well. It's number one, to put the ability to put an emotion in them. Mm -hmm. The emotion that a lot of Asians are afraid to utilize or not know how to utilize it effectively. Mm -hmm. And after having that emotion, to also present it with an evidence from your personal point of view. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the person doing it might not realize right. or be able to put words into it, mm -hmm. to give the perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think giving that is being involved. And by doing this simple process of putting an emotion, giving evidence mm -hmm. and connecting, you're actually doing those three things. Mm -hmm. The communication to get connected, the ability to let you feel like you're being understood and being heard. 
and more importantly to feel loved, mm -hmm. to be appreciated. It's a very powerful thing. You can get all three by doing a very simple thing, by being observant. Mm. Because how amazing if it feels, parents, if someone were to notice what you've done and they put an emotion to it by feeling, you know what, I'm like maybe your boss, and uh, someone that's senior to you and say, you know what, I feel so honored to have the opportunity to see you take on the role as a new leader. And you've been able to handle these clients, handle these people, handle this. And because of that, I, does, I do not need to worry about the company anymore. And I can feel very safe that you will do it. Right. That, that, that feeling is something that money cannot buy. No present that you can buy can ever give that emotion. And that's something that's so magical that it's so powerful that parents can give to their kids. And if you want to, parents, if you want to know why is it that children love coaches like us so much, it's because we use this day in and day out. And students tend to feel what they feel because of what we do. And we don't want this to be an internal secret. Right. It should be done by everyone yes. because everyone deserves to feel this yes. way. And, and I hope you guys are taking notes. If you're not, rewind the video, <laughs> go back to the back, play again and get those three points. Put an emotion to a specific thing that have happened. Mm -hmm. Give evidence of what has happened. And then put yourself there, be vulnerable and share what does that mean to you. Mm. That three simple steps can change your child's perspective. Right. Mm. And it doesn't matter how young or how old they yes. are, it will be effective. Give them, just be sincere and manage your tone and, and still make it work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's very powerful. And uh, I'm very happy that you share that because if I were to interview a lot of other people, there are a lot of people, this, this particular information is a highly kept secret. Because this is something that changes everything. Why? Because it's something that's super powerful. Mm -hmm. I guess the reason why you're so open to share is because you care so much. I, I think the very main reason is that being a coach for so many years, the students come to us once a week, one to two hours, and we do our very best to build their confidence, their mm -hmm. self-esteem. Mm -hmm. but. The, the time that they spend with parents, we grow the seed and then the parents tarnish it. We grow and then the parents destroy it. And what, how can we expect uh, uh, this tree to grow and, and you know bloom or the flower bloom flourishes? No. So I think it's very important as what I mentioned just now. Yes, parents bring the income to the household. You allow the children to go to all these kind of platforms and give the responsibility to the educators. But if the parents can work hand in hand, we teach the skills and knowledge, and the parents have these communication skills. You don't need to know how to teach public speaking. You don't need to know how to teach piano. You don't need to know how to teach taekwondo. But with such an acknowledgement communication technique, it's enough. I agree. It's we, enough. When you build the foundation, when they're strong enough, your child will be the one responsible to find that knowledge. I'm a big believer of that. That's the reason why when we created turbocharged learning, it's all about giving them the skill, but more importantly, to build that confidence and self-esteem within themselves. Because when they have what they need for themselves mm -hmm. internally, they will be resourceful yes. enough to find a way to get things done. Yes. But the thing is, we need to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm so connected to Dr. Elaine is because when we first met and we worked, started to work together, we both share a very important principle. We do not want to see our student forever. Mm. We don't. But for somehow reasons, we meet our students five, eight, ten years <laughs> later, they will be stopping us on the street <laughs> and they will be so happy to see us and they say, oh my god, coach, is this your coach? Your coach? I'm your student ten years ago. And that makes us feel a bit old. <laughs> um, but it is that feeling because what we did with them many, many years ago yes. allowed them and their families to be independent, to not depend on people like us anymore. We do not want to see our students forever. Yes. One of our biggest goal is to get the students to not need us anymore, yes. to be independent for themselves because this is the reality. Yes. If we can help you get your fundamentals right, you are set for life. Mm. You are set for life. We would rather see you less, but see you grow, rather than see you more and see you suffer. Ask any doctor, a real doctor would want you to never come into the hospital ever again. That's why they work so hard to save your life. And, and that's something that I, I've learned to, to embrace. And sometimes the things that I might say might be hurtful. And you've definitely been very sharp telling the parents like, we help, and then they burn it, and then burn it. 
I can see why you're so direct because by the end of the day, sometimes it's better to say something that might hurt your feelings, but it's true and it's important for you to hear. Because with that set of knowledge, when you have the right set of knowledge, awareness, you can do something about it. I would rather do something that's difficult, but it's right. I'd rather be honest and hurt someone's feeling rather than to lie and to make you just feel good and nothing changed. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so happy and so proud to call you my friend. Uh, and I'm so excited to continue the journey of education with you, Dr. Lei. Yeah. And um, you know what? For those of you that would like to get to maybe ask Dr. Lei any questions, it's very simple. In the comment section below, just put down questions over there. And if we had enough questions, we can actually pass those questions to Dr. Lei. And maybe we can actually with those questions, you will motivate her to actually come and have another sit down with us so we can actually answer those questions together, you know, share more to you guys. So if you have any questions, remember to put a comment down there. And if you like to get in contact with Dr. Elaine or you like to get a copy of her book, we have the Mandarin written version with the English written version. Uh, links and details are all in the links below. Make sure you get connected. And um, if you have enjoyed what you have here today, what you've listened here today and you feel it's good, Remember to like it, share it with people that you know. This set of knowledge, I think, is not just for us, it's for everyone out there. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe and stay updated for the future videos. Dr. Elaine, thank you so much for your time. I thank really you. appreciate it. So, uh, any last words for the parents out there? Well, I always like to say this phrase when I conduct any courses, seminars, or even forums, talks, whereby Giving life to a child is not only giving birth, but to ignite the internal flame inside from within and thus advance humankind as a whole. Wow. She, she really does do that. <laughs> so parents, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope you find today's information very useful. See you guys in the next week. Till next time, stay awesome, stay happy. Bye!